RG Podcast Season 2. Today we have a very special guest with us, Miss Fu Ma'am. Welcome to our program. Thank you, Bidi Adama. So how are you feeling today? Nervous, excited, happy? A little bit nervous because this is my first time to do podcast. Really? But I feel delighted to have this chance to talk. I'm grateful. Could you please kindly introduce yourself to the audience? Of course. Hello everyone. My name is Fu Shu Qi. I come from Hebei province of China. I received my bachelor's degree in translation and interpreting from Hebei Normal University. With outstanding performance, I was selected by my organization to teach Mandarin in Nepal. This country is the first foreign country I have visited, but I have had a great experience here. As a Mandarin teacher here, I endeavored to teach the students to give a window through language to our students. I teach them how to communicate in Chinese and experience special Chinese festivals, traditions in class, and we have Chinese club. In Chinese club, I will provide students with various resources to learn something about Chinese traditional culture more through practice. That's amazing. So how did you come to know about Rajoshi Gurukul? I came to know Rajoshi Gurukul, this school, through my organization, the Center for Language Education and Cooperation of China. It's a non-profit institute in the profession of Chinese language education. Um, our organization arranged volunteer Chinese teachers to schools according to the school's request and also our assessment of the school's qualification. And RG, it is, top, is, it is ranked top five international schools in Nepal, and it has always been supportive of Chinese class, so I came. So you told me earlier that you implement various activities in your class to teach students Chinese. So could yes. you explain about the Chinese educational system and how you are implementing it in RG classrooms? Yes, mm, system would be a huge concept. I'd like to share my observation on daily practices. In China, high school students usually have a long school day. I mean, stuffed routine. They will start their school day at around 7.30 a.m. and finish the day at over 8, 8 p.m. It's a long day. So schools will usually arrange a lot of group activities to refresh the students. For example, in the morning, students are requested to read aloud anything they want, beautiful passages, key points from the textbook. And in the middle of the day, they will have mass running in the playground. That's interesting. Yes. And as for the morning reading, I am introducing this to my students. So in the morning, I will appear, I will show up in the classroom and let the students to read out something they want. It's a good way to activate their minds in morning. And at the same time, the knowledge is acquired. Mm, that's amazing. So what kind of activities do you do in class or perform in class so that children are entertained in learning Chinese and your teaching is actually effective? I will design a lot of activities, I mean fun games, to learn new words, new sentences. Because uh, from my perspective, when someone needs to learn a new language, the most important step is to use that language. So there will be a lot of fun games to involve the students to use the new words and new sentences they have just learned. And so far, the most popular game I would call guessing the words. So after learning the new words, the students are requested to perform with body language the new words they have learned. And a lot of creative Ideas can be seen during the game. It's a good way. Oh, that's amazing. So you told me they, they perform different kinds of activities to learn Chinese. Mm. But what exactly is the benefit of learning Chinese language? I would say there are a lot of benefits from learning Chinese. For a student, if he or she can learn Chinese or even good at speaking Chinese, he or she can easily get enrolled in Chinese school, even got scholarship from Chinese government. Easily? Yes, it's true. I know a lot of Nepalese students, they are excellent in Chinese and they get enrolled in Chinese schools. They are enjoying the top educational resources in China. Their majors include medicine, computer science, and etc. 
I feel like I should learn Chinese and go to China. You should. I should. You are good at it. Thank you. Um, I have another question for you that I heard that there is these exams called YCT. Yes. Could you explain the levels in that exam and how they run? Or how are you preparing students in RG for that exam? Of course. YCT, Youth Chinese Test, or we call it oh, YCT, yeah. is to test the students' standard of language, of Chinese language. So YCT is divided into four levels from YCT 1 to YCT 4. And different levels have different standards. For example, YCT 2, it requests the candidates, the participants for that exam can master 150 words and the respective grammars. Mm, in my like in our school in Mandarin class, I'm preparing students for YCT 2. What what do we do every day? I give tasks every day for new words. So they can learn like daily accumulation is more effective. And as for the grammar part, we spend the whole period every week to practice gra grammars through listening, speaking, reading exercises. Oh, how hard are these exams and how do the results differ from person to person? It's, yeah, exam, it, it must have some difficulty, but after hard work, I believe our students can make it. Okay, so how was your experience in RG? I would say it's a wonderful experience. Really? Yes, because when I first came here, I just found our students are very energetic, full of accomplishments, accomplishments, I mean, and uh, they are like, they have a, an awareness of globalization is very important in today's world. And uh, as I have researched in our school, in academics, there's one thing I really appreciate. What's that? That is, our students are learning in a very creative and practical way. For example, last year, to uh, teach students how to do business, do marketing, we held RG Market. The, yes. the whole school deliberately vacated one day to hold that activity. It's, yes. it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. And students are distributed different goods, products to sell to our customers. And they need to learn how to um, publicize, how to sell the products to the customers and they need to learn how to communicate. It's a very practical way to learn. Oh, what about your colleagues? How was your experience with them? Colleagues? Wonderful. I, yeah, I talked with our teachers and I found they are using a very mature and effective way, scientific way to teach. It's, there's nothing to judge. Oh, okay. And one more thing, I want to talk about our school's facilities. Sure. It's sufficient for the students, of course. And I was surprised when I first came here. I found every classroom in RG has AC and has multimedia resources. resources. It's, it's rare in, I mean, in Nepal. And another thing, a very cute thing I found the other day is uh, the windows of our dining hall yes. was repainted with oh. refreshing colors, with pleasant colors. Like, you know, I feel this school is really taken good care of. It's yes. not a, only a place for work and study. It's a good place to live and enjoy. It's really a good place to learn. Yes, it does take care of the details. Yes. Now, I would like to ask you, like, what is your future plan? What would you like to do in the future? Mm, I have plans in different aspects. First of all, the YCT2 examination is coming. So I hope as many of my students as possible can pass that examination. Oh, it will be, yeah, thank you. It will be a big achievement for both of us. And uh, as for the uh, activities, I mean, programs coming, coming programs. Um, Chinese, like, uh, there will be a lot of competitions, including singing, dancing, painting, and we are preparing for those competitions. I hope my students can get good place. They will. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Bidiyatuma. Thank you, ma'am.
forgot what to say. Namaste.